Hey y'all, it's Dana, the Marigold Shepherdess, and I have uh, decided to go ahead and make this video about cold washing wool. I've gotten so much um, feedback, and I've gotten so many people who reach out to me about this technique. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share the bare bones of the technique with you in this video. Don't worry, I have a, a much, much better video in the works. Uh, the camera work is not fantastic and I was a good bit of jumping around, but this will give you um, an idea of how it works. You'll be able to start following the technique with this video and then I will have follow-up videos that'll be a lot more in detail about different fiber types and things like that that will be a lot more hope helpful for you, I hope. Um, so uh, please enjoy. And I hope that it is uh, very helpful information for you guys. Um, say hi to the sheep. They are expecting to be let out onto the front pasture for their evening meal. Um, all right, sorry, completely distracted. I'm going to do a short video. This is not going to be the in-depth video that I'm putting together. But I've already got, so I've got, these are my pans out here with water. You want them to have... Uh, low sides, um, you know, the if you get the tall, big tall storage totes, if you fill them up too much, um, they will, the sides will buckle, and along with that, you really don't want to put, you want to put a thin layer of wool down, so we're just going to go ahead, some Clun Forest wool from my good pal down the street, who gives me her entire clip every year. Oops, there's some rich wool in there. I guess I didn't skirt this one as well as I thought I did. Okay, there we got it. All right, so that is enough. And you can see I'm doing about 50% wool, 50% water. Uh, it's probably a little more uh, water than wool. And I can actually probably put a little bit more in there, but I'm not going to. And then, nah. here's the secret. Here, here is the secret. You ready for the secret? This is what gets your wool clean. It's not hot scalding water. The soap definitely helps. But if you want to get that wool clean, you got to spray it with the water hose. This opens up the lock. And gets that soap down in between the fibers. Oops, I, these are a little full. There we go. These are a little on the full side with water. Normally I would only have uh, them partially filled up. And then I would fill them up the rest of the way once I get the wool in there. Um, so that I can get the spray, uh, fill it up the rest of the spray so they can get, uh, good and agitated. And believe it or not, this does not ruin your lock structure. Seems like it's going to, what ruins your lock structure is not spraying the wool with the water hose. What ruins your lock structure is if you pull the wool out of the, ba out of the pan and you pull it out in clumps. You want to pull it all out in one big mat, uh, not mat, but one big um, wad of wool. Um, because if you try and pull, if you just pull it out in clumps, all the fiber just starts falling apart. So I'm actually going to let this sit for about probably 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, my previous video was. Uh, I, I said to leave it for 24 hours and it dawned on me why in the world would you just let it sit there in its own dirty disgusting water for 24 hours that's not gonna make what is is you know it's not gonna make any difference for getting it any cleaner you wouldn't sit in your own disgusting bath water for really long and that would only work if you're trying to do the suit method which we're not doing here so um, this is going to be um, about an hour. I'll come out, I'll scoop this wool out, uh, dump the dirty gross water 
in my garden and then refill it in the second go no soap uh, especially I mean this wool is really not that dirty um, so I won't need any soap for it and I'll rinse it and uh, do rinses every hour or so until it comes clear uh, the water's clean all right so the first soak is done soak that has all the soap in it and everything and we're gonna move this to um, my skirting table to rinse this wool off and recharge all the baths and everything and when you take this out don't take it out one water at a time you want to go in and you want to get the whole thing together which does require two hands um, and so I don't have somebody to film this for me and all that so I'm gonna get these out and put them on the skirting table and then um, uh, pick this back up Okay, I got my piles of wool here. I need to open these up carefully. Uh, but I've let a good bit of the water drain out before doing so. Try to get the non-cut side up. And try not to mess with it too much because the more you mess with it, the more it all pulls apart. So if that's about all you can do before you start to feel the locks and the, the different locks... Uh, pulling apart that is fine like you can see what I just did there I messed that up and that is fine because man sorry that I am quite possibly the world's worst um, cameraman here all right so we are going to spray this fleece down with the water hose try not to panic it's gonna be okay I'm just going to go get the water hose and we're going to hit this with a good spray from the water hose. Ugh, this is not going well with the camera. so. Normally, I would hold the wool in place and keep it from rolling up and being a tear with the other hand. So, um, but you can see in the areas where I can't get those tips, this gets those dirty tips right off. Yeah, I am so sorry. I'm gonna have to do this whole thing again. This is ridiculous. Like apparently I cannot video and do something at the same time. Um, there we go, sorry, sorry. There we go again. So you can already see though, except for some areas, so that's got some veg in it, so it's a little darker. But all this up here, look how much wider that is, you just can spray this out. So once again, I'm gonna have to go, uh, back to being able to utilize my other hand to help me get this job done um, and I will hose this down properly by holding this fiber the wool in place um, so it doesn't go all over the place and I get it, it gets a good drenching and then when I get done with that I will do I'll do a quick show you uh, what that looks like okay so now that I've got a lot of these dirty tips sprayed off, and don't worry, I'll be spraying this again several times, so it will get the vast majority of these muddy tips clean. Now that I've got a good bit of the lanolin out of here and a good bit of the dirt, you can see how much vegetable matter is in this fleece, but that doesn't really bother me. Um, so things you need to be careful of, and one thing I really need to do is with the skirting table, I need to really tighten up uh, this uh, netting I'm using um, because it really doesn't help when all your wool wants to roll down into the middle while you're um, hosing it off. I need a better system for that. But this is what I'm working with for now and things you want to make sure you don't do is actually with the water hose uh, roll your have your wool like roll up like that as you're hosing it um, because it's really hard to unwad to get it clean without destroying your lock structure, which is exactly what I did. Um, so good thing I was planning on carting this because I've 
pulled all the locks in this piece almost completely apart. Um, but you can see the lock structure is maintained in um, a good many other parts of this fleece. So I'm going to start putting um, this back in the, in the tubs. And I've got the tub, so I have the tub half filled with water this time. And so I'll put the wool in and then I will hose it again with the water hose. Look how clean that is already. This will definitely need one more rinse with the hose and then soak. But I'll um, get this uh, probably in about 30 minutes. It does not need to sit in there any longer than 30 minutes. Uh, do another rinse. And uh, I may just actually soak a small piece of it um, just to see how much um more dirt comes out because it very could well could be after this soak and another rinse it'll be done it'll be ready this clun force comes clean so easy um i'm going to go way more in depth on this method uh with my gulf coast natives fleeces that just do not get clean uh with the scouring method um at all like i cannot get them clean with the scouring method um, and so I have been able to get them pretty clean with this cold wash. So um, leave this soak. I'll come back to it. We'll see how it looks um, after another rinse. All right. So this is the soak. This is the water after just one soak. It's uh, got a little dirt in it. Uh, it's a little dirty, but it's okay. Hey, Heisen. Um, and nah. all I did, I decided that I'm not going to soak it again. It just doesn't make any sense um, to soak it again when rinsing it should get the last of that out. So we're going to come over here. Nah. Yeah. Um, and so this is rinsed. I'm letting it drip dry for a little bit. Nah. Um, and then I am going to uh, spin the water out and lay it out to dry for reals. Um, but all that's left is the vegetable matter and the stained tips um, because unfortunately I let this sit in a bag for three years. Um, yeah, this is three-year-old wool. And look at that, look how clean that came. And even the tips are clean now, they're just stained. I was planning on dyeing this wool anyway, so not a big deal. All right, so that is the very basic, basic um, thing for a way I do the cold scouring. There are a lot of other things that I want to cover in future episodes. I'm gonna break down scouring different types of wool um, and different little things you need to do to make sure that you maintain lock structure if that is your goal. And um, as well as uh, why cold washing might be better for your wool than the traditional scouring. I hope you're able to apply this. I am very curious. I have quite a few people now who have switched to cold washing and they keep up with me how they're doing and what um, what little tweaks they've made as well to their method in their area. So um, please, you know, if you've tried cold scouring or you try it and you've got any uh, suggestions or ideas or comments, um, please let me know. I would love to know more. The more I know, the better. Um, because uh, if you 
have access to a, a bucket and a water hose that so easy to do and you can scour so much more I mean look at all this look at how much wool I cleaned in uh, that was about three hours in three hours I scoured I forgot to weigh this beforehand but that is I'm sorry about my chickens um, but that is probably around three maybe four pounds of wool um, within three hours and it's squeaky clean I promise you um, I'll show you that uh, at the end of this video all right so I was able to cart up a nice little bat with no problem whatsoever picked and carted that combed up a little bit of top as you can see very nice right so that's the fleece all dry and I'm just gonna work on getting better videos <laughs> and uh, I'll let you know when those are ready. Thank you so much for watching. Bye y'all.